OK. Where do we start here? Uh, Let's start, start with you, Esther, because you look fantastic and you saw the movie today. I've written a column for The Sun and The New York Post, actually, same column. Just because I feel... When I hear the word patriarchy, mm. as often as it's said in this movie, immediately I'm like, here we go again. Yeah. Here we go again, this sort of construct that, or, despite everything that's happened in the last 50 years, all men are awful till they prove otherwise, all women are downtrodden, oppressed, and if only it wasn't for ghastly men, they'd be ruling the world. You know, Lily Allen said she went to see Barbie and Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. and, and the clear conclusion was if women were in charge, none of that would have happened, right? I mean, it's just, it is exhausting to me. I mean, I, could, I suspected this would happen when we started having a conversation about whether Barbie's a feminist icon. And I just thought to myself, why does Barbie need to be a feminist icon? Anyone who's grown up with Barbies knows that she's just a doll that girls like to play with. And then 10 seconds into the film, I'm just being shoehorned with this ideology, this, you know, patriarchy this mm. and feminism that. And I'm just thinking it's a giant catfish of a film. It's like going on a date wanting to see J-Lo and then, I don't know, at the other end you see someone like Lizzo, for instance. I'm just, it's, it's completely unnecessary. Why can't we just have a film about dolls? The people that made this film have never seen any of the other Barbie animals. No! Films because it's completely unrelated. It's a giant catfish. And I just think... And all the Kens, and no offence, Chris, we're going to come to you in a moment. All the Kens <laughs> are, are such, dumb. They're such... Dumb dweebs. And it's and like, so like they've come off the set of Love Island or something. But this Ouch. is the problem. They're so incompetent. And it's like, how can... And at the end of the film, they try and say, oh, but we're all humans and we're all equal. OK, but you've, paced, you've painted half of humanity as incompetent halfwits. So okay. exactly how does that work? <clears throat> Nomika, you represent the matriarchy, which is another awful-sounding word. Um, oh, it, seems to me what, it seems to me uh, what the movie really wants to do is just replace the patriarchy with the matriarchy. In other words, go from one thing which every woman apparently believes is the problem with the world and flip it round so that the people who suffer the problem and the oppression and are made to look like downtrodden imbeciles are men, not women. I don't really get that. Why, why is it so awful, this atriarchy syndrome? Why replace the P with an M? Well, we're like in late stage capitalism. The world's on fire right now. Uh, women are losing their fundamental rights, at least in my country, uh, left and right. We still don't make equal pay on the dollar. We're doing emotional labor, we're doing physical labor. As the beautiful America Ferreira uh, just said in her, her, she had a moment in her long speech, that is why we want to replace the patriarchy, which is very top down, into a more communal, democratic way of living, which is the matriarchy. And back when we had matriarchies, it was more democratic. There, I mean, Crete, of the famous island of Crete, had a matriarchy where they didn't go to war, and then it was, everything was communal. So I don't really see a downside of this. I mean, right now. So you think, oh, just to be clear, you yeah. think if women ran the world, there'd be no warfare. I, I think that it would. we have different ways of dealing with conflict than men do. And if it was a majority female-led environment, we would not be in a lot of these circumstances. Really? I mean, even you think women, women, never engage in, <laughs> women never engage in conflict? Is that a joke? I say we engage in conflict. I think it engages in conflict. We're humans. But we don't engage in conflict the same way. And I think this was satire, it was art. I'm sorry if some people wanted it to be a kid's movie, but the best art, whether it's The Wizard of Oz, or, or our Barbie is really a reflection of the times, is a reflection of the struggles. And frankly, I don't know, I saw, you said that you've never seen a movie like this. When I saw that Marilyn Monroe movie, who was a complicated, beautiful artist, genius, they made her out to be, a, I mean, it was despicable. It was an assault on women. So how about most movies out there do make women feel uncomfortable? And my God, it's art. Have a sense of humor. There was satire. It was a, you know, attacks on capitalism, uh, climate change, warfare. It was, it was fun. It was layered. Right. It was complicated, like women. Before I bring in Ken, let me just bring in Grace. I know you're not into the whole Barbie thing particularly, but patriarchy, you're definitely into, right? <laughs> yeah. You do I'm think. I'm so into it. I'm so do... into patriarchy. A little bit. Look, are are is, you what I mean? Does this the patriarchy is the ultimate, really exist? An obvious end point of the very successful attempt that we've had within most capitalist societies for liberal elites to basically take over and commodify the feminist critique, which was a critique of capitalism. This is a massive box office, you know, hitting movie made by a huge multinational corporation that's going to make loads and loads of money that also uses, like, exploitative labour practices all around the world. The problem is, you know, it's not like... Uh, there was Ariana Huffington famously said the financial crisis wouldn't have happened if it had been Lehman Sisters instead of Lehman Brothers. That's obviously completely wrong. I personally don't even buy the idea that there are these huge, insurmountable differences between men and women. The problem is 
capitalism. That's why we have gender inequality. That's why we have racial inequality. That's why we have all these different forms of inequality. And unless we get you know, that fixed that, that's, by taking down is, big corporations like Mattel, everything is going to stay that, the same. That's fine. I, I have no problem with you believing that. That's fine. I'm glad you just, have can, no problem with me believing that. Just I'm glad leave, we agree we, that I have the right just, to believe what yeah, I believe. Can we just leave Barbie out of it? I don't mind them making this trash heap of a film. Quite hard to leave Barbie out of it when you're literally dressed like well, Barbie. Yes, but let's let's rename the film to something, some pink feminist like child film. Let's do that because what well, this Barbie film is not Barbie related at mm. all. Anyone who's seen any of the Barbie films, any of the animated series, who's grown up with it, this is <clears> not Barbie related at all. Ken is not, uh, you know, a half wit. Barbie is not ideologically incoherent in the way that she is in the film. Let's just separate the two. Well, let's this bring in let's good. bring in the smirking. Yeah, half shall I weigh in on that? <laughs> all right, Chris. Uh, hey, first of all, it's really mean so far. No, no, I'm Jay, Love Island slash. I'm, I'm, I'm only. I thought this this I'm one is so on there. I'm making a I have a historic thing about Love Island, which I'm sure <laughs> yeah, is yeah, yeah, very yeah. aware of. Let's put that to one side. Look, it's incredible. You're in this movie, Thanks. which is now one of the biggest grossing films in history. First of all, how does that feel? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, Pretty you're on great, Love yeah. Island, and now you're in the biggest movie in the world. Yeah, it's fairly Not a normal progression for Love Island. No, no, not really. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing. And the story about how you got this is equally mind-blowing. You yeah. go to some premiere of a movie, mm. and you end up, or you're not there, and your mates are, you end up going to Margot Robbie's after party. Yeah. And she turns out to be a massive Love Island fan. Yeah. Including you. Yeah. She knows who you are. Yeah. And then I started talking about male genitalia and the rest is history. Was this true? Yeah, no, I didn't make that You talked true. about a f someone you knew with a micro penis. A friend of mine, he has a micro penis, yeah. As in, how big? Well, I, I've not got a ruler out next to it, Piers. Like, I don't know exactly. But you were telling Margot Robbie. It's it small. Tiny. It's, it's, I'd say, inch. And then you have a from, mate from with <laughs> very large testicles, is that right? Uh, my dad's best mate has very big bollocks oh, and he can dude. carry beer And this is how you managed it. to get inside Margot Robbie's head to end up playing Ken. It's Maybe, a true story. I don't know. That is, that is what happened, but I, I, I will say I panicked. <laughs> I panicked and I just said whatever came to my head. And it was relevant. Like, people were talking about penises, but we're not here to debate this. This is after I actually now. find that I the was, most. I'm like so intrigued about I found the it. most riveting thing. This of sounds all. like one of those stories where it's like, oh yeah, my friend needs advice about something. Yeah. yeah and right. this is how you basically wooed <laughs> Margot Robbie about to myself. get you in the movie, right? Next yeah. thing, 18 months later, you're in Barbie. I'm in Barbie, yeah. All because of that conversation. All because of micro penises and big balls, yeah. Now, you get there, you're one of myriad Kens. Mm. My impression of them is they're basically depicted as a bunch of losers. And that if, if I made a movie flipping this round and depicted women the way that this movie generally depicts men, yeah. all hell would break loose. Do you accept that? I accept that, but I think I feel like you're missing the point. So I think everyone's missing the point a little bit. Like, So it's a comedy, right? And we're in very dangerous territory when we start picking out comedy and saying, oh, you can't say that, you can't say that, because then we're going to live in a world where comedy I'm not saying they don't can't exist. Say it, but there's a distinct political and social point they're making yeah. about the patriarchy, which is rammed home again. Yeah. And again, I get that. and again. What I'm getting to is, is the, it, the, the overarching comedy, the overarching joke of the entire film is you're, you're looking at Barbie, which is played with by children, mostly girls, and this is how they play with Barbies and Kens. Barbie is the primary character, and Ken is the secondary character that comes in and out a little bit and is widely disregarded because the girls see themselves in the Barbie and not so much the cat. This idea, that's yeah, just but an hang on, look, thing. Chris, this, the, my problem with it is this idea that you go into the real world from Barbie land, where every, all the women are in charge, yeah. and the real world, suddenly you're confronted with this vile place run completely by men, and they're all awful, even down to the depiction of the company that makes the Barbie dolls, which is so different to the reality of that company. Female president for 30 years, half the board now are women. Yeah. It's not run by a bunch of madmen executives, as this film wants you to believe. There is no overt sexism from the company because it was basically run by women. I don't think Mattel would want people to believe that. I think what you're missing is the fact that it's a joke. And a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot of... He's got you there. But we're, but we're like, the butt no, of the joke. No, no, because listen, right? Who cares? Listen, comedy... <laughs> exactly! <laughs> no, I totally agree. Yeah, I totally really agree. It's a free and market yet, capitalist society. Oh, Still made money. Oh, what, what's wrong with that? Blakely, I totally agree with you. My point is, if I made the movie and flipped it and was mocking women like this, you would be leading the charge. I'd be hung, drawn and quartered, probably executed. It's the hypocrisy at the heart and of it. Stop and then making you would say, then. oh, they're all... comedies anymore. No, no, no. And, and then, then you stop, would say... Stop, stop, stop you can make them. Jokes. The way you're making a very deliberate point, promoting feminism 
and using patriarchy as a stick to beat all men so they can prove otherwise, I have a problem And then with if it. women come on your show and say, oh, I've got a problem with this, you say, oh, shut up, snowflake. Hold like, on, that is the, the whole debate that we've had in recent years. Like, you can't say anything about anything because you're a snowflake. Men are being snowflakes about no, 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 I don't no, even no, like them. No, no, you're missing my point. You're totally in excuse me. I haven't seen that, I'm sorry. I, I think you're missing the point. Okay. I'm not asking for Barbie to be cancelled. Obviously, everyone's enjoying it. My wife, asking for my wife and daughter went to see it in LA a couple of days ago. They loved it, right? Fine. My problem is with the argument it promotes, I'm allowed to criticise that. That's called free speech, right? I'm not trying to silence And I'm allowed Barbie. to call you a snowflake for criticising it. Yes, you are, but you're missing the point about why I'm criticising it. I'm criticising the hypocrisy. If you flipped it around, Esther, if I made a, a, a movie which lampooned women like this from a very male-dominated position, all hell no, would break. The thing is, it is hypocrisy. I take offense with the, f the fact that you think this is a comedy. It wasn't funny at all. And also, there is there is Who something like this that actually mocks women. It's called a Dave Chappelle special. Mm. And every time he comes out with a new special, we need to cancel him because he's punching down on the poor women. The reality is, this film is a giant catfish, and he used the Barbie name to try and shoehorn this these ideologies into a kids' film. And you can call it a comedy if that's your standard of entertainment. That's fine. And I don't really have a high standard of entertainment. I watch Love Island. I watch Fast and Furious. And also, how are they selling? How, how, also, how are they selling? Selling this femi Let me go to uh, Namiki for this. How are they selling this feminist utopia? I'll tell you how they're selling it. They're selling it by choosing the hottest woman in Hollywood, Margot Robbie. Everyone thinks that, male and female. And she's making... She produces it, I think. She's, uh, her, yeah, her, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, her production company. So she's making tens, probably hundreds of millions of dollars as the hottest woman in Hollywood in every sense from a movie which makes out all women are oppressed by the patriarchy. Forgive me if I laugh. She's the walking, breathing embodiment of someone who's making the patriarchy look like a bunch of losers, isn't she? No, I don't agree with that at all. And I think historically, there are a lot of women who had to use whatever tools were available to them. She is beautiful. She's also a brilliant actor. She's also extremely intelligent. Yeah. She's also well-spoken, as are all of the women and men, by the way, in that film. Ryan Gosling is not getting, you know, the attack the way she is. <laughs> Furthermore, that's capitalism. And until capitalism yeah. fails, which I think is the patriarchy, by the way, I think the patriarchy is capitalism. Until it fails, people are going to do whatever they can to survive. I mean, that is at what... what point, at what point would you have to accept, on behalf of the matriarchy, that the patriarchy doesn't really exist anymore and that basically most women I know are running rings around blokes? At what point do you I admit that? In a, I think you're literally in a bubble and do not open the newspaper because the way that women are under attack in the United States right now is mm. jaw-dropping. I mean, you, the, with the ban on abortion, the ban on women's health clinics, uh, women being targeted, a uh, rise in, in, in domestic violence, not to mention that our pay has not moved in ages. There's a declination in women in leadership, even though we think we should be at, at some sort of um, a parody at this point. It's the way that women in the press and in the public are attacked by online campaigns, by corporations, by uh, the well, right wing. you don't wing. think I men are? You know, you? Have you no, spent even a minute in my Twitter feed? Trust me, this why idea why only we... women get trolled on Twitter. No, no, this it's is ridiculous. Wait, 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 absolutely ridiculous. It's important because actually this is the problem when we get the commodification of feminism, is that we get this idea that feminism means like every, you know, CEO of every corporation being a woman or having 50% of women on boards. That's not the lived experience of the vast majority of women you know, alive. The vast majority of women actually live in, you know, either in very poor countries where they're denied an education or they live, you know, in situations where they experience domestic violence. Here in the UK, one in three women will experience sexual assault at some point in their lives. You know, That's what life is like for most working thank, thank class you women. Making, thank you and you can't that get rid point. of that by just Great. saying, oh, we're going to, like, you know, make a couple of, you know, prime ministers or, or CEOs well, women. No, That's the problem with liberal... And you don't, think, you don't think young men ever get assaulted? I mean, I do, but they don't get assaulted no, to the extent that women do. That's not the point well, you're like, you, you, you know, they, who gets oh, stabbed in the streets is very rarely women. It's young men by men, right? I think we can agree. So there that are different forms. Violence of, is a problem, but it's not. There are lots of male victims of violence. Sexual violence, right? I think we, we didn't can all, say sexual when violence. It's, yes, it's I did. Assault. I said sexual violence, it's right? Which is an, a, a deep, deep problem in our society. Yeah. It's actually, if you look at it, within, side, within and outside the home, more common than what you're talking about, kind of gang violence on the streets. And it happens to women so much. And when it's, oh, when it's part of a bigger narrative about racism, then it's fine to talk about violence against women. But we're actually talking about how we tackle violence against women, unless it's right. a part of this wider agenda, the cultural agenda, okay. nobody cares. Right. And that's a problem. Well, I care. Uh, Ken, last word to you. <laughs> You're Kent, <laughs> right. I, I hope I wait with a bated breath. What, last word from me? Your last word. 
I think as the resident king. I think everyone's just missing the point oh, that it okay. it's based. It, it's a joke. Greta Gerwig <laughs> has done a good <laughs> job <laughs> of navigating a potentially massive minefield. You're right. If it flipped, it would be a different story. But right. Ultimately, that's my I'll point. Admit that, I'll admit that. Right. But thank we're, you. We're Chris. talking about a doll that was made in the ni- in 1959. Listen, so in power. It took women, you 18 minutes, that, but you got to a place <laughs> of saying that, that's beers, beside the point. I agree with you. It's that's the beside market. the point. By the way, I want, to end, I want to end on that. It's about beat, women though. empowerment. There was only saying. one. <laughs> of course the women. <laughs> yeah, all right, enough virtue signaling, mate. You've, got, you, you've, you've ticked all the boxes. I'm going to end by giving women what they really want from their kin. It's this. <laughs> that is terrifying. Is That's that a proper kin. Uh, There's another one here. Like you there we go. That's, fo- that's heavily photoshopped. It's not at all. I have no words. This is the whole... I've got a whole raft of kin pictures here. I have nothing to say. That is terrifying. That Esther's, is Esther's really gobsmacked. She's I'm, been I'm, silenced I'm by the glory. I'm speechless. Thank you. <laughs> Let's leave it on that. Rendered silent by the glory of my <laughs> kingdom. Uh, thank you. Chris, congratulations, mate. Uh, Margot Robbie's one of my favourite actors. Probably is my favourite actress. I met her in uh, an Oscars party. She was fabulous. Did she tell you so, about how she likes Union? No, we talked She's about a cricket. big fan of Union. We talked about cricket. She's an Australian, unfortunately. And I've, obviously, unfortunately. Right, now, <laughs> right now, it's the last thing I want to talk about is cricket. Uh, but, well, at the time, there was no Ashes series. We had a great conversation. Lovely woman, very talented. Mm. Couldn't be happy that a woman is making hundreds of millions of dollars out of her looks and her talent uh, in the patriarchy. What a miracle. How's she doing it? It's, it's really, it's, it like it's it incredible. Exist. Oh. That some woman is able to do that, break through this towering sexist mayhem, which inhibits all women I know, including these two downtrodden, oppressed female creatures in front of me, who I know just never feel they can even speak unless I let them. Right, ladies? Of course. So <laughs> uh, Chris, great to see you. And Thank congratulations, you. seriously. Cheers. From Love Island to the world's biggest movie, that mm. is a trajectory I never Ten. thought I'd ever witness. Mm. So you... You can't slate us anymore. I can't slate you anymore. <laughs> I can't it's slate, I can't oh, slate you anymore. An Oscar-worthy yeah. meteoric rise. It's amazing. And I genuinely... Thank you.